Now, picture this. You're standing on a barren, lifeless world. No air, no water, just fine gray dust clinging to your boots. Dust so sharp and stubborn, it once damaged equipment, clogged filters, and posed a real threat to astronauts during the first moon landings. This dust, called regolith, is a chaotic mix of crushed rock, tiny metal fragments, and bits of glass melted by ancient meteor impacts. For decades, it's been known as the silent enemy of space exploration. But that story is about to change. What if I told you that regolith, once a problem, might now be our greatest resource? Hidden within it are key elements like silicon and aluminum, the very building blocks of advanced technology. Instead of hauling thousands of tons of material from Earth into space at massive cost, we could use this lunar dust to build factories right on the moon. Factories that construct solar power satellites designed to capture sunlight in orbit and beam clean energy back to Earth. No fossil fuels, no carbon emissions, just sunlight and dust. Now imagine this. It's a quiet evening and the city around you is glowing with light. That electricity? It's not coming from a power plant nearby, but from a massive satellite built entirely from moon dust, silently orbiting above, soaking up solar energy and sending it down as microwave beams. Sounds like science fiction, right? But it's not. This is a vision that scientists are actively working to make real. I'm James Brown and you're watching Astro. Let's explore how moon dust could become the power source of humanity's future. Every day, when we flip on a light, charge a phone, or boil water for tea, we're tapping into a finite energy supply. Fossil fuels, oil, gas, coal, have powered human progress for over a century. But now we're hitting the limits, and more than that, the way we've used them has come at a high cost. Global temperatures are rising, ice sheets are melting, sea levels are climbing, storms, floods, and droughts, more frequent, more intense. Let's take a look back at 2024, a year of extreme weather events, devastating floods across Europe, record-breaking heat waves in Asia, massive wildfires sweeping through the US. What used to be rare is quickly becoming our new normal. At the heart of it all, our deep reliance on fossil fuels. Not only do they release huge amounts of CO2, but they trigger chain reactions that disrupt entire ecosystem. Here's the challenge. Global energy demand is exploding. With over 8 billion people on the planet and millions joining the middle class each year, electricity use is only going up. More devices, more transport, more everything. Sure, we're pushing for renewables, wind, hydro, solar, and they're growing fast, but even at today's pace, they're not enough to meet global demand, and each of them has limits. Wind and hydro depend on location. Solar energy, though abundant, faces big hurdles here on Earth. Why? Because Earth is far from ideal for capturing sunlight. Clouds block it, dust dims it, and at night, solar panels simply shut down. On average, solar panels on the ground only work at 15 to 20 percent efficiency, even lower during bad weather. That makes solar power costly to scale and tricky to store. But what if we went above the atmosphere, where sunlight is constant, no clouds, no night? Could we tap into this endless sea of light to power our world? As far back as the 1960s, brilliant minds were asking that exact question. And the answer they proposed? Sold up power satellites, massive stations in orbit, soaking up sunlight and beaming clean energy to Earth using microwave transmissions. No fuel, no pollution, just uninterrupted power. But there's a catch. For decades, this idea stayed on paper. The reason? Sky-high costs. Building and launching such a satellite would cost billions, a barrier too big to cross. Unless 
we find a way to cut those costs? What if we didn't have to launch heavy materials from Earth at all? What if we could build the satellite in space using materials already out there? This is where moon dust, once thought to be useless, suddenly becomes the key to solving Earth's energy puzzle. Now let's explore a dream born in the 1960s and why even today it's still just out of reach. The idea of capturing energy in space and sending it back to Earth isn't new. In fact, it dates back to the 960s, during the height of the space race. One of the first people to seriously propose this concept was Peter Glazer, an American engineer who filed the first patent for a solar power satellite in 1968. His vision? A massive machine orbiting Earth constantly soaking up sunlight and beaming energy back to the planet using microwaves or lasers. Clean, limitless power, free from fossil fuels. On paper, the idea sounds perfect. In space, sunlight is steady and uninterrupted. No clouds, no night, no weather. A solar power satellite could run 24-7, generating electricity non-stop and sending it home Zero carbon footprint, zero fuel required. So why, more than 60 years later, don't we have one in orbit? Here's the problem, scale and cost. To produce enough electricity for even a medium-sized city, a satellite would need to be enormous. We're talking solar panels stretching kilometers wide, weighing thousands of tons. Now imagine launching all of that into space piece by piece, hundreds of rocket launches, transporting and assembling parts in orbit. It's not just expensive, it's a logistical nightmare. Estimates suggest just one solar power satellite could cost tens of billions of dollars. And that's just for launch. Add in materials, space-grade equipment, and complex assembly, and it becomes clear why this idea stayed on the drawing board for decades. But cost isn't the only challenge. There are tough technical questions too. How do we transmit energy back to Earth safely and precisely? Can microwave beams avoid harming wildlife and ecosystems? And how do we maintain satellites in harsh space conditions with radiation, micrometeoroids, and constant wear and tear? Despite these hurdles, the dream never died. In recent years, agencies like NASA, ESA, JAXA, and even private startups have begun testing prototypes. Some have already trialed wireless power transmission over short distances, on Earth and in low Earth orbit, with promising results. Still, turning this dream into reality needs more than just new technology. It needs a new approach. And perhaps the key has been right in front of us all along, on the moon in the form of regolith, that dusty, abundant resource, could moon dust be the missing piece to build solar power satellites in space and finally bring this vision to life? Let's dive into one of the boldest projects of the 21st century, Metaluna and its ambitious satellite, Morpheus. For over half a century, we've been stuck with the same problem, high costs and limited technology holding back the dream of space-based energy. But now, a new path is emerging, not here on Earth, but on the surface of the Moon. Instead of launching every solar panel, every beam and bolt into orbit, scientists are proposing something far bolder, building solar power satellites directly on the Moon using local materials with a fully automated production line. At the heart of this revolutionary plan is a project called Metaluna, led by the company Metasat and the University of Glasgow. Their goal? To deploy a robotic factory on the moon capable of mining lunar dust, processing it, and assembling a solar power satellite called Morpus, all without any humans on site. Sounds like science fiction? Maybe. But the science behind Metaluna is very real. So why use moon dust regolith? 
This layer of fine dust and shattered rock covers the moon's surface. It's one of the most abundant resources available in space. Inside it, you'll find silicon, essential for solar panels, and aluminum, perfect for building lightweight, durable structures. What's more, regolith naturally forms agglutinates, small clumps of melted glass ideal for 3D printing. With today's tech, we can melt regolith, shape it, or 3D print components for machinery, structures, and satellite modules, all without importing raw materials from Earth. Morpheus, a sandwich satellite made of moon dust. Morpheus is designed like a sandwich. The top layer collects solar energy, the middle converts electricity into microwaves, and the bottom transmits those microwaves back to Earth. This structure not only maximizes efficiency, it's also easy to build in zero gravity. Peace. Metaluna plans to manufacture these modules on the moon, then use locally made fuel to launch them into lunar orbit and from there into Earth orbit. Every stage, mining, manufacturing, launching, is managed by AI and robotic systems. And here's the impressive part. The lunar factory needs just a tiny shipment of complex components from Earth, like microcontrollers and precision sensors. That's it. Just a few kilograms of parts enable the factory to produce tons of usable material, expanding itself over time like a von Neumann machine, self-replicating, self-sustaining, and independent of constant resupply. The payoff, lower costs, minimal environmental impact. With Metaluna, material transport costs from Earth could drop by 90%. Why? because only lightweight, high-value parts need to be shipped. Meanwhile, producing and assembling satellites off-world means no pollution, no land use, no depletion of Earth's resources. Even more, this system is designed to recycle old satellites. After years of service, Morpheus units can be retrieved, disassembled in lunar orbit, and the materials reused to build the next generation a closed-loop energy ecosystem, waste-free, self-sufficient. Challenges ahead. Of course, this won't be easy. Regolith is abrasive. It can wear down machines fast. The robots and AI need to be incredibly advanced, capable of running an autonomous factory in one of the harshest environments imaginable, far from Earth, under extreme temperatures and radiation. But thanks to rapid advances in robotics and artificial intelligence, this future is getting closer every day. Metaluna and Morpheus are the bridge between vision and reality. Together, they could launch a new era where energy flows from dust and sunlight, not from Earth's limited supply. But the question remains, can these tiny grains of lunar dust really power an entire planet? And are we ready to embrace industry beyond Earth? Let's look at the final challenges still waiting to be solved. Even with all its promise, the plan to build solar power satellites from moon dust still faces major challenges, technical, environmental, and technological. The dream of clean energy from space feels closer than ever but the road ahead isn't all light. It's filled with shadows. Regolith, resource or enemy? Let's start with regolith, the dust that blankets the moon. It's not as easy to work with as it sounds. Technically, it's extremely abrasive and clingy. Each grain is tiny, like talcum powder, but with edges sharp as razor blades. It scratches, grinds, and wears down machinery fast. Apollo astronauts called it nightmare dust. It stuck to everything, suits, tools, joints, and even clogged equipment. In the moon's thin atmosphere and low gravity, regolith can hang in the air, forming dense clouds that reduce visibility and damage electronics. If Metaluna's robotic factory is going to last, it must solve the dust problem, protecting its robots, 3D printers, power systems, and transport gear from constant wear. Robots and AI, ready or not. 
Running a factory on the moon requires highly precise, durable robots, smart enough to mine materials, process them, assemble modules, and even repair themselves. But here's the catch. Today's robots, even the best, aren't quite ready for long-term operations in harsh lunar conditions. Temperatures swing from minus 280 DGF to over 250 DGF. There's intense solar radiation and no atmosphere for protection. And to make this work, we need next-level AI. Not just smart, but self-sufficient. Able to coordinate hundreds of tasks, respond to surprises, and keep everything running safely without human help. That kind of AI hasn't yet been deployed beyond Earth. Managing and updating it from 238,000 miles away? That's a challenge on its own. Transport, the bottleneck. Even if we build the satellites on the moon, we still have to get them into Earth orbit to beam energy back. That means space tugs. Using fuel made on the moon, strong enough to launch hundreds of tons past lunar gravity. And there's more. Old satellites must be hauled back, dismantled, and recycled without creating dust clouds. But large-scale towing and recycling in space? That tech doesn't exist yet, and it won't come cheap. Funding and global willpower. A project like Metaluna needs global cooperation in funding, tech, and legal rights. Turning the moon into a mining hub raises big ethical questions. Do we have the right to industrialize the moon? Who owns its resources? How do we avoid a space race or conflict? Still, with each passing year, science moves forward. 3D printing, robotics, AI, all evolving fast. Today's challenges might be the launch pad for tomorrow's breakthroughs, when light from space truly powers cities on Earth. And if we succeed, it won't stop at the moon. The entire solar system could become a source of limitless energy for humanity. Now, imagine this. One night, not too far in the future, you look up at the sky. Massive satellites drift silently above, capturing sunlight that never sets and sending streams of invisible energy back to Earth. Cities glow brightly below, powered not by coal or gas, but by dust. The same moon dust once seen as useless, even dangerous, now becomes the foundation of an energy revolution. Dust that once jammed machines, threatened astronauts, now lights up our world. If Metaluna and Morpheus succeed, the moon won't be the end, just the beginning. Asteroids, Mars, even the Kuiper Belt could become the next energy frontiers. Humanity, no longer bound by Earth's limits, could tap into limitless power from across the solar system. But like every great turning point in history, the question isn't just can we do it, it's should we? Are we ready to turn the moon into an industrial hub? Who will control this energy? And what does our world look like in a post-fossil fuel future? So what do you think about building an entire factory from moon dust to power the future? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this journey into space exploration and beyond, consider subscribing so you won't miss what comes next. I'm James Brown and you're watching Astro. See you next time on our next journey to the stars.